coming up and uh you know like in a you know a young age just starting you know to play and everything what was the uh you know what was it like what was some of the early bands that you were in and you know some of the bands that you know kind of got you to where you're uh where you're at today you know that's a good question i, I was playing in a club band i actually dropped out of college which didn't make my parents all that happy to play music <laughs> and i was in this club band on in long island called devious and we started playing you know the local long island club circuit and yeah, you know, it wasn't really moving along all that well, but then one day we played at the club, and my friend, my good friend Tommy Henderson, who I've now known for many years, happened to be in the crowd, and he was in Warlock at the time, and they needed a guitar player. So he contacted me, um, actually that manager contacted me, and asked me if I was interested, and I went down and played with her, um, and then I ended up getting that, that gig. So that's how I ended up getting from the club scene into a, a bigger band. And Warlock too. That was like right at the uh, right at the time when uh, you know they blew up. You know they brought out uh, Triumph and Agony, and and then you came in for uh, for Force. How, how do they pronounce it? Force Majeure. Yeah, Force Majeure. It, Majeure. Was, it was you know a big time for her because she was just getting off a very big record. Right, right. And uh, I thought you were a perfect fit for that band. I mean, you had like that, you know, that good raw sound, and it was a it was a good heavy tone, but it's it's very melodic, and that's. That's what's exceptional about your playing, and, and I think that's what uh, you know really appeals to uh, you know to not only you know just people that, that love playing guitar, but you know people that are fans as well. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, me a Marshall guy. I've been using Marshalls basically my whole career. Yeah, and your and your uh, you know your work on you know with Doro and with uh, you know with Warlock and everything. How how did that go? I mean, you were you were on that you know that album and. Uh, how did the touring go, and, and, and what was it like being, you know, in a band like that for you, you know, just coming up and, you know, hitting a big time like that? That was an interesting experience for me, because I went from playing clubs to, I did the Force Major record, and then we got on a big tour in Europe, and one of the first shows we did was playing the Metal Hammer Festival, opening up for Ozzy in front of like 30,000 people, <laughs> and that was the first time I'd ever played in an arena, so I actually have a very vivid recollection of what went on before that show. I remember being really nervous, you know. Right, and can but imagine. Well, all, all very good experience for someone. I was only, you know, I was like 25 years old or something. No, well, younger, 23. Right. Uh, so I was basically just a kid, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I got lucky with the, with the job, and I got into something good, and then we made a few videos, and MTV was big at the time. Right, right. So, you know, once, when you get onto a television, no matter in what capacity, it changes things. You know, they don't have that in really for today. There's you know, really no music videos, but it was just incredible how, you know, that altered so many bands from the time, the ability to get on MTV. Right, and you're right about how different it is now. I mean, now, you know, there's there's videos that are put out, but they're not they're not showcased the way they were back then. You'd have to, you know, YouTube and, and the uh, social media sites, and it's just, it's definitely a different atmosphere. I totally agree with you. Yeah, everything's completely different today. It's all social media. Right, exactly. And when you when you were uh, you know with you know with Doro and you were you were coming up and and uh, and you hit the you know you hit that that time frame you know when uh, when grunge started up and you know and we all know about that you know what it did to you know to the eighties bands and you know things like that and I was cool because I just learned today that that uh, that you were an attorney, which I think is awesome. And, uh, yeah, and I looked it up and, you know, I was looking in and, you know, because I wanted to make sure I had some things for the interview, you know, besides, you know, the basic stuff. And and what I thought was, was really neat about that was the fact that, you know, you went from, you know, seeing the way the music scene was going and, you know, getting involved in, in law and everything. And that's really an interesting story. How did that come about? You know something? My career and, and most of the 80s bands' careers, Everyone's career changed the second Kurt Cobain hit the stage. As right. soon as Nirvana got signed, the entire 80s rock thing just really went out the window, it was over. Right. And it wasn't back in for a long time. You know, really, you know, all of the 90s, that whole grunge thing took over. It's, it's sort of remarkable that it had a resurgence. Right, right. It seems like now yeah, that... But that's really what happened. That's why I went to law school, because once Nirvana hit... Um, you know, I didn't feel like there was any place for me as a, a lead guitar player anymore because no one really cared. There were, there, people were writing songs. There were no there were no leads in songs anymore. 
Right. So I just saw it all like falling to falling away. So I figured I better do something else. And then I went to law school, and I represented Jeff Pilson, who was the bass player in Doc. Right. Because he 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 was in the band with my friend Tommy Henderson. And when I represented at the time, I was representing Jeff. Um, George Lynch quit the band, and then and then he called me. Although when he called me, I, I vividly remember this. I was actually in a suit that day. I called my office voicemail, <laughs> and I heard a message from him asking if I can come play. But he didn't mention that it was for Dawkins, because had he done that, I definitely wouldn't have done gone. And right. I was at my father's house, and he said to me, go. I said, are you kidding? I haven't played guitar in like two years, really. He's like, go. Right. So there I was in my suit with no guitar. I drove to Redonda Beach to a studio. The door opened, and there was Don holding a guitar, very skeptically saying, here, play. I'm like, well, can I hear the track first? He said, no, it's an age of play. I didn't think he knew I was any good. And right. I ended up doing two guitar solos in the matter of like 20 minutes, That but one of which was that a song called The Irish Song, right. which made it onto a release in Europe someplace. So right. that's how that all happened. That's amazing, too, because, uh, you know, coming like that, like you said, after two years and then being able to, uh, to jump in like that, you obviously impressed him pretty much. Yeah, you know, from there, um, a couple of months, I'd say later, this is 98, you know, in, in June of 98, then Jeff called me back and said, hey, we're headlining the Dallas Starplex in, <laughs> in two weeks, three weeks, and we have no guitar player, can you, can you do this? So, so I learned the songs, and that's how it, that was my first, well, actually, we played for Don's birthday on June 29th, and he gave me directions to, of where to go to meet him to play at, at a, a club that he owned. Right. And I drove down there with like my girlfriend at the time, and I got lost and I couldn't find the place. And <laughs> literally, like we were very late, and I was gonna, I was really getting ready to say, you know what, just turn around, forget it, it's over. And I'm sure had I not made that gig, they never would have spoken to me again. Right. But just because the place was called the Stakeout, but I thought he said Steakhouse. Right. <laughs> so I was looking for. I kept pulling over to gas stations. Hey man, where's this, the Redondo Beach Steakhouse? Right. <laughs> so finally, the girl who I was in the car with said, "Hey, I see a bunch of people there. Is this a stakeout?" I'm like, "Yeah, that must be it." <laughs> so I showed up a little late. They were all on the stage. It was like literally in the nick of time. Like something tells me, had I not have found that, I never would have gotten into the band. Right. That's so, a <laughs> that's a great story. That, yeah, that is a great story. And and you know what's cool too was uh you know when with you you know getting the gig. And Dawkin, who, without a doubt, is, is is my favorite band of all time. I mean, I'm a huge metalhead, huge, you know, melodic hard rock fan. And, you know, to uh, to be able to, you know, like I said, to talk to you and, you know, hear these stories, especially with, you know, the Dawkins stories and everything is is really amazing. And, how, and when you went into the, you know, the first album, when you guys did Hell to Pay... You know, what was that like as an experience for you? I mean, I think Don, you know, is a is an exceptional songwriter. He's kind of like the, uh, you know, to me, he's like the, uh, the the thinking man's writer in, in hard rock. The, you know, the songs are emotional. There's there's tons of feeling. And I think your guitar style, I mean, it, it matches the, the, you know, the song style and the writing style perfectly. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we have a good writing chemistry together. On the Hell to Pay record, frankly, like, I didn't feel like, I felt like I was too new in the band, right? To um, to really speak up at the time and say, you know, my opinion of, you know, it was too 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 new for me. So it wasn't really till the next record we did together, what with Lightning Strikes Again, when I really said to him, you know what, let's do a really vintage Doc and sounding record, and I got him to 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 get into that concept, you know. Right, right. And that yeah. album, that album is exceptional too. I mean, you know. Uh, Lightning Strikes Again and, and, you know, the latest one, Broken Bones. You know, I think that you really, uh, you know, you really hit your stride in that, too. I mean, uh, you know, like you said, the you know, the writing, you got more involved in it. And the songs, you know, are heavier. And they have the, you know, more of the, yeah. the vintage docking sound. I think that's that, that fits you perfectly, too, man. Yeah, thanks. We did, a, did a, I really like the Broken Bones one. You know, we went for a heavier, you know, sort of twist. There, and you know it's unfortunate that you know just that we had some issues that caused us to not tour at the time the record came out. But yeah, you know, I think that's probably my favorite one that I've done with Don. Right. 
there's so many there's so many good songs i mean i I actually got it for my birthday which which uh I think the album came out like a week before my birthday, so I got it at that time and uh it was amazing man I put it in and you know heard uh you know heard the playing and you know how how great the album sounded it was uh like i said it was it was a perfect fit for you and and we also got the DVD version, so I got to see, you know, how you guys did the recording and, you know, in uh, Dawn's studio and things. What's, what is... Oh, yeah, yeah, we did the DVD and start with that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. That was a cool addition to see, you know, about the, you know, the, the way you guys write and, uh, and do things in the studio. And what's it like, at, what's it like to, uh, you know, to write with Don? I mean, with him being, you know, uh, you know, so acclaimed for so long, you know, to, uh, to be able to get involved in that, and like I said, you guys, you guys click amazingly, and it's it, it's a it's a Thank great you. fit. Well, how how we usually do it is like I just you know I'm constantly recording guitar riffs onto my cell phone, you know, right, always. Right. <laughs> like it doesn't stop. And so by the time we're ready to make a record, I'll have you know like a hundred ideas on my cell phone that I'll then go through, and you know I just we get together and I play him my ideas until something like inspires him, and once I see that he's into it then we'll we'll take that piece and go from there and write like you know if it's a chorus then we'll just write a verse and get a verse chorus b section and the riff and then we'll record that and you know see if we have something that's how we do it that's cool and what's it what about uh you know when you go out and you know you're playing the live shows and we got to see you guys we saw you in wheeling west virginia um i believe it was in 2008 i know it was on a lightning strikes tour and uh, you know, I thought the band sounded amazing. That was the first, you know, time I got to see you live in Dawkins. And uh, you know, what's it what's it like playing with those guys? I mean, you know, you know, Mick and uh, and Sean. You know, you guys seem to gel really well. Um, it's a great fit. Well, actually, uh, Chris McCarville is the bass player that we have now. Oh, Chris, but, I'm know, sorry. I've been playing with Mick Brown. You know, I've only really played with two drummers. But I was horrible. I could play with Bobby Ronchelli. And next next July fourth will be my twentieth year anniversary of the first show I ever did in Dawkins. So wow. I've been playing with Mick Brown most of my career. Right. So at, at this point, we, you know, when you play with someone for that period of time, it's, you you develop this certain you know mind meld where you just you know I always just know without even looking at him where he's going to go and what he's going to do. Right. Right. You know that's just what happens when you play with him for that many years. So we we just have like a really great lock together. Music, musically, you know. Yeah, you have a great chemistry. And, yeah, we have a really good chemistry. And uh, Chris McCarville did the 2007 Poison tour with us, so he was someone we played with before. Right, so you guys had a had a working relationship already, and that that has to be nice yeah. too, you know, for you as a as a musician to go up and have that familiarity, and you you're able to, uh, you know, to just do what you do, and you don't have to worry about what what the other guys are doing, and uh, that has to really help in the, you know, as far as the songwriting as well. It's, uh, you know what it is with music, it's just any, with any sort of, you have to have chemistry, you know, like either it works or it doesn't. Right. And, you know, sometimes you can change one ingredient and then the whole soup just tastes like shit. Right. <laughs> exactly. Luckily, the soup that we've been making seems to taste pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree. And I know, you know, I, I've heard that, you know, you guys are going to be, you know, starting to write, you know, a new album in 2018. And, and you know, I, I, I heard Don mention, you know, a few years back that, you know, Broken Bones is going to be the last one. And, you know, and, and I know me as a fan, you know, saying, oh, man, you know, I, I hate to you not hear any new docking material. But to hear you guys, you know, starting to write again and, and, and talking about coming out in uh, 2018 was something. I think that's, that's fantastic. I'm, great. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do another record. Um, we're, t we're definitely, you know, talk we're talking about it now, and we'll start it, we'll write it this winter probably, and hopefully it'll, it's gonna be out for next year's touring season. That is, that's gonna be, that's gonna be great. And how about the shows, you know, this year? I know you guys, you know, just did a few shows, and you know, uh, you know, we're getting to see a lot of that out, you know, it's more social media stuff. And I, to me, I think the band sounds great. You guys still sound, you know, just as good as you have, and it's. It really seems like uh, everything's even getting even tighter. I mean, is it? A lot of the artists that we talk to, you know, they they mention that, uh, you know, they they sound better, and 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 with maturity, the you know, that it really starts to click, and the you know, the older you get, the better you sound. Do you, do you believe that's that that's the truth with you guys? 
Well, you know, look, the more you, you play together and the longer you've been together, I think it affects the whole chemistry of everything of what you do. So, you know, we've been doing this all together now for a really long time, and right. we play so many shows that you just get, you know, more and more in the groove with the other players that you're working with, you know? That's just sort of how it works. Right, right. And and then uh, what I wanted to ask you is another thing is when you uh, you know when you got the gig with Doc and you know trying to uh, you know re you're replacing somebody like George you know they bring you into the band and and uh, what was that like for you I mean you know he has that huge fan base and you know when when you come in you know that, that that's huge huge uh, shoes to fill and, and let me tell you what John you did a, a fantastic job I mean I don't think anybody could have filled those shoes better than you have. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. You know, I, I guess for me, for some reason, right from the from the get go, I never really um, tripped out on that concept at all. I guess had I done that, it might have affected me differently. But it, it just never really, you know, really went into my brain or anything. So that's why it didn't it didn't bother me. You know, I guess it, you know, there's a lot when you can put something out of your mind or it's not in your mind, you can just do your job. You know, I guess had I dwelled on that, it might have been different. But it just for some reason never really. Affected me one way or the other. I never looked at it like that. Right. You know, I never viewed music either as like anything competitive. So I was just there to do my own thing. And I think you have. I think I think uh, you know the the fans and, and and everybody's really starting to see. You know, uh, they're really starting to see the you know the separation now. Hey, this is this is John Levin now, and you're starting to get you know people that are that your influence is right right now and i think that's you know that's really you know saying something that's really uh well, it's great thank to hear you. That. i really appreciate that that's really kind of you and 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 what do you as far as a guitarist what do you look at you know as far as um you know you're going out there and playing and you know you're starting to see you know, like the younger fans right now. What what are you starting to see out there? You know, from the fans. You know, younger. Like as far as uh, you know, how you're an influence to them and how you're a uh, you know, kind of like a you know, a guitar icon to them. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, it's great to see the young generation now being exposed to to our music. Right. You know, because if that's what's going to keep this going, and you know, other if it wasn't exposed to the kids, then if you at some point, then the whole new genre comes in and something can, the whole genre can die off. So we're fortunate that now youngsters are learning about our music, you know? It, it, keeps, the, it keeps the flame burning. So that's a wonderful thing, you know? Right. And, I, and we've been noticing, you know, a lot of the shows that we go to, you're starting to see, you know, a lot of younger kids there. I mean, kids that are, you know, 15, 16 years old. I mean, really getting into it, knowing the lyrics and things like that. So, you know, it's like you said, it's it's it, it seems like it's making a resurgence. I mean, in America, I know it's always been you know big in Europe. Is that is that what you're starting to see as well? Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm see, when I look at the crowd, I see the entire gamut of age range from very young to to all the elderly. Right, so right. It's really really <laughs> something incredible to see. You know. Exactly. Exactly. And as far as a, as far as you as a as a songwriter too, John, um, you know you guys are going like you said you're go, you're going to start you know eventually writing the you know the new album and everything. Is there uh, is there going to be any you know ways that you want to go in as, as far as an album? I mean, you looking to do like a vintage docking album, or is it just going to be you know something that no, you want to do? Vintage docking album. We've already discussed. We've already been discussing it. We, we just want to. We want to do another vintage docking record that's straight up the middle for the fans, you know? Right. There may be one or two songs that we stretch out on, but that's what the fans expect, and that's what that's what we want to deliver on, you know? I think you guys, you know, do it. I mean, even on, uh, you know, Broken Bones, it's it still, you know, it had the vintage sound, but I think you brought a new, uh, you know, a, a little new twist to it on, on a few of the songs for the new, new millennium. It has like a, you know, like a... Uh, it doesn't have like any of the grunt sound. It just has a little more of the modern sound, which which I think is cool because it's kind of it kind of transcends the you know the two generations. Yeah, on that record, you know, we managed to do a docking sounding record, but with a little bit with a little different twist, and that's what I really sort of liked about that one. But on this one, we're going we're going to just go straight up, straight up the middle. That's going to sound awesome. I know I know us as fans, you know, we're really looking forward to it. You know, anything that yeah, you do. Me too. Anything that you do. 
how about uh, how about as far as you know uh, you know touring wise? I know you guys are you know you're you're, you're still doing a lot of dates. What uh you know what's what's some of the things that are coming up right now that the fans are you know can look forward to? Uh, well, we just got back from Europe. We just did the Bangerhead Festival in Germany. Right. And then um, we're going to do this festival in England, in Kent, England, um, in a week from now. So you guys are still playing, a, you know, playing a decent amount, and it's, you know, that's good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, that Don, Don decided to, uh, you know, stick with this lineup, and I know he's happy with, with the way it sounds, and I think, uh, I think you guys are... I think you guys are doing a fantastic job, you know, with that lineup. I think it's a it's a great sound, and I think everything is, uh, you know, really it's it's setting a uh, it's kind of it's kind of setting the past, you know, back, you know, and and keeping the future separate, which I think is cool with the band. Oh, sorry, I just lost a little bit of what you just said. You were saying that you were happy that we stuck on stuck with this lineup. Yeah, I said I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm happy that you know he decided to stick with the lineup. I know you know, uh, you know people question, you know, bring you know getting the old band back together. But I think it's, uh, I think it's great what you guys are doing right now. I think it's a, you know, there's a docking, you know, that you know from the past, but then there also is the docking of today and the docking of the future. And I think that's just saying, hey, this band continues to grow, and I, I think it's great what you're doing. I'm, you know, I'm really happy with what you guys are doing right now. Well, thanks, man. Yeah. You know, I, I agree, and I think that it's always good when you have the right lineup and you stick with one thing, and everyone has an opportunity to like reach out and grow. You know, right? Exactly. And how about you, uh, as a guitarist, John? I mean, if if you if you had to answer, you know, the question, I mean, what what would you want your uh, your legacy to be, as far as a guitarist in uh, in hard rock and metal? You know, what, what would you what would you want that to be? Well, you know. I think the most important for me thing is that I remember when I was a kid and I was inspired watching another musician play. And sometimes I'm, when I can see that I affected someone, when I look in their eyes, and, you know, I can see I got through to them and made some sort of brought them some sort of happiness or whatever it may be. You know, that, that's the most important thing for me as a musician. Right. You know, more than anything else. Yeah, for me, playing music was never about money or any, or anything else. Than you know, making doing the best I can with my instrument and my craft and trying to be the best player I can be and to the extent that I can in, you know, put out some influence on, a, on someone else that gives them the same amount of inspiration that I had when I was a kid, right. that, that's the best thing. And I think you've definitely done that. I think you're, you know, you've made a mark on the, on the music scene now. You know, I know a lot of guys that, you know, that I know in the, in the business, you know, and, and like local artists here, you know, are really are really influenced by your playing and and uh so everything that you're doing out there man we're listening you know we support I, I think you know me personally the stuff that you play man just blows me away it's great to listen it's there's so much feeling there's so much melody and it's uh it's exceptional and and, and i appreciate it thank you so much i can't tell you how much that means to me really thank you very much it's things like that that make me want to keep on going yeah, you really are, man. You're an amazing guitarist, uh, you know, and I, I think I think what's what's great now is uh, is you're starting to you're starting to hear your name mentioned up there now with the, uh, you know, with the guys that you know that have that have already made, you know, the noise, and now they're starting to say, hey, you know, John Levin, man, listen to this guy, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's really bringing it, and and all these albums, man, right now, I mean, you really are, man, you are bringing it, and it's and, and it comes across, it's. It's amazing. It's it's a pleasure to hear you play, and and uh, I look forward to the new stuff, and I, I look forward to seeing you guys, uh, you know, do a tour in the U.S. Right, maybe thanks. next year or whatever. Thanks, right. De definitely hit me up when we're in your town, and you know, let's we'll meet. I'll get you on the list, and be, be, you know, be great to see it. Oh, you got it, John. Hey, is there any uh, is there any last words you'd like to get out there for the fans or anything? Um, just want to thank all the fans for coming out and supporting us all these years. And, you know, they're the most important thing. Without the fans, we have nothing. Oh, you're welcome. I, and and I want to say uh, at the end here, man. I I think you're a great guitarist. You're you know you're a uh, you're an influence to me. You know as a, as a fan and, and and all the the musicians you know in this area and on the scene. And and I'll be a Dawkins fan for life, man. I I really appreciate what you guys do. 
amazing songs, amazing writing. Uh, you know, to me, the, the the best the best melodic the best melodic hard rock band, in my opinion. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. All right, John. Uh, I wish you the best of luck, man. Uh, you know, I hope uh, you know everything that you guys do and the, and the new album and everything is really successful. And uh, I look forward to hearing more of your playing, man. Just keep doing it. It's amazing. You got it. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. All right, John. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye. -bye.